is a 30 foot amphibious boat that we built called the Prowler. Um, and it basically is a culmination of things that we've learned in the last five, seven years working on different autonomous platforms. Um, and, you know, not specifically at one government requirement, but also a combination of ideas that we had that we wanted to showcase, including uh, amphibious and semi-submersible. So uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, the vessel is on its own wheels. The front wheels are self-powered, so they have the ability to move the vessel around, um, kind of in a situation like this at a low speed, come up a ramp out of the well deck on a ship, all on their own feet, if you will. Um, the rear tires and wheels are more conventional trailer equipment. Um, and the vessel can also, once it's where it needs to be, the front wheel can be retracted and the, the vessel can be towed over the road without a trailer behind a, behind a prime mover. So um, on top of that, we, we kind of added some semi-submersible capability. Um, the, it's hard to see from here, but the sides are, are open voids to the, the sea. Um, and when she's running, she runs pretty traditionally as a planing boat, but when she settles in the water, she semi-submerges. Not completely under the water, but you know, with a low profile, um, both for the sake of lowering detection, but also uh, improving uh, sea keeping and sensor stability, uh, and also uh, survivability in, in heavier weather. We've got a folding mast. The mast uh, leans back, really, and that's to achieve the, uh, the transportation is such a key element. This is, this is a C-130 in a container deployable solution. So, you know, that, that was key in order to get the whole package into that shape that we needed for that. Um, likewise, over the road, but over the road is really easier than, than, than some of the airborne missions. Listening and learning from our clients about what they have, what's worked, what hasn't. Um, really a focus on modularity. There's a, a payload module uh, in the vessel that allows you to change out both the propulsion and any of the payload packages, like the, the payload bay, if you will. Um, and just kind of seeing how, what makes it difficult for our clients trying to use the, the product. A lot of lessons learned and experience from our Marine Corps LRUSV program. Um, so a lot of that kind of DNA in it, a lot of our ideas and a lot of feedback from, you know, clients that we've been working with. Yeah, I mean, it, it has a, you know, three to five mile an hour surface speed on, depending on grade and so forth. But the intent is, yeah, it comes to a ramp, it goes up the ramp moves to where it needs to be staged, staged, and it could either redeploy or wait for a prime mover to move it a, a larger distance. So yeah, it has both those capabilities. We've got a hardware capability, an operating system, but the payloads are what the clients choose based on what their mission is, right? And, and we've shown some mock demonstration of you know, UAV launch capability and some mock demonstration on some micro USVs, which are really more around giving people ideas what they could do with it. Um, and there's a fair amount of trade space. I mean, we're, we're looking at about a 35 knot sprint speed boat, about a 500 mile range, and, and at least a thousand pounds of payload that could be distributed, kind of dependent on what the mission of the, the customer is. She's got some things that we've, we've still got to do, um, but we want to get her to the show kind of to show the capability. We'll be going through our own internal testing and then kind of making her available to clients in the next, next one to three months um, and then from there it's a question of what we integrate and that'll be client driven more than than us but yeah she's um she's fairly mature she she'll be she'll be wet next couple weeks